Okay, so Najia said she did not hear me from the very beginning. So uh, I will pitch quickly. Okay, I said this is the assignment, uh, and you have to work in groups. So the assignment is based on writing paragraphs. Task number one, you should write a short paragraph about these um, terms like authentic materials, a short paragraph with examples, inductive versus deductive, paragraph, examples, top down versus bottom up, okay. Then you move to task number two. These are situations and you have to read them carefully and then you reflect on them. Reflecting, you see what is wrong, what is right, what do you think about it? And, and then you write them in a paragraph. So situation one to number five. And the most important is task number three. You have to write an essay about 1,000 words. Uh -huh. And here you have to, um, to take into account this topic. You have to take into account the teaching approaches, methods, students' different learning styles, teachers' different roles, and most important, the four skills and their sub-skills. Based on that, you are going to write a detailed essay about how teachers can take all these aspects above into account to teach effectively. If you want to teach effectively, number one, you should know about the approaches, the methods. Number two, you should know about your students' age, level, learning styles, different learning styles. Number three, you should know about you as a teacher, your roles that you are going to play in each activity or in each situation. And most important, or most importantly is the, the skills. How can you teach the skills communicatively, effectively using the sub skills? Okay, great. So this is about the, the assignment. Great. Now, concerning the, the, the micro teaching, the micro teaching, um, here Shahrazad has got a question. Okay, do we have to work them together? Yes, you are going to work in groups, please. You are going to work in groups of threes or fours. I put you in the, you have got the group list. So directly you try to contact the group members and you work on them all together. Even the essay, you have to write it together. Here we talk about cooperative learning. In your future classes, when you give an assignment or a project work for your learner, the best of the best is that they should work together in groups, okay? Great, now for the micro teaching, what is the micro teaching? We have the macro. The macro is when you teach the whole session. For example, one hour session or two hour session. And then there is the micro. The micro teaching is very helpful for novice teachers and even for experienced teachers because you are going to focus on one particular area of the lesson. For example, you will have between five to 10 minutes to teach. You are not going to teach the whole lesson, no. You are going to teach only one part of the lesson. It can be just one stage. I give an example. If you are teaching uh, grammar, you may teach only the presentation stage, presentation, five to 10 minutes. Or in the presentation stage, you are not teach everything. You are going to teach only one part of the presentation stage, the, the noticing the observation, highlighting the structure. You can do just this one. So you are going to focus on one point, one area of your lesson and you teach it. When you teach it, of course, you have to, to play different roles. You have to use the sub skills. You have to use good materials, good interactions. Instructions must be very clear. The instructions must be simple. When you tell them working groups, so I want you now to work in groups, five minutes. So you mentioned the time, you mentioned the mode of work and the purpose of the, the activity, etc. Good, and if you want to teach reading, you can, choose, you can choose only one stage like post reading or while reading. And in while reading, you don't have to teach everything in while reading. You can choose only one part, just for example, gut feeling exercise or two or four exercises, etc. This is the micro, the small, the micro teaching. Now, when you finish teaching, your colleagues, your classmates must, they must give you feedback because there are two types of feedback. Positive feedback, what was great, what was good, what was interesting about your lesson. And then 
we don't say negative. I don't prefer negative feedback. We say areas of improvement. Areas of improvement. So we are going to provide, for example, good feedback. Yeah, uh, for example, you use very interesting visual aids. Um, uh, your interaction with the audience, with, with the students was great. It was student, 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 then teacher, student. So this is, uh, this is uh, good feedback. Then we have areas of, improv of improvement. Yes, for example, you did not use different materials. You used only the whiteboard or you used only um, uh, uh, worksheets or you did not teach pre-teach vocabulary in the, in the beginning. These are areas of improvement or the way you stand was not very professional. Okay, you, st you stood only on one position. So there was no monitoring, etc. Okay, yeah, very good. Mariam said constructive feedback. I like this term also, okay. So you, you, will, you will have between five to 10 minutes to teach a certain, you have the freedom. You choose any topic, any scale, any lesson, but please don't teach the whole lesson. If it is reading, don't teach reading pre while post no way you choose only one stage one subscale two subscales are in a five to ten minutes then the the, the 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 your colleagues are going to give you feedback why and also the trainer will give you the feedback because at the end you are supposed to write the portfolio the portfolio is a collection of many work works or materials okay and you have to include them the lesson plans you designed, the activities you worked on, the, the feedback you received. So you have to add all these things in the, uh, in the portfolio. So which means when your colleagues are going to give you the feedback, you have to take notes and to write them because these types of feedback, you have to include them into the portfolio. The coming sessions, I'm going to explain more what do we mean by portfolio. And I know that some of you have got a good idea about, about it. Is it clear? Number one, don't teach the whole lesson. Just one part of it. One subscale, two subscales, one stage, that's enough. Good. And here, there's a question. With, with the previous trainees, I told them to record the video about themselves, to record the video, and they shared it on WhatsApp group. And I put them into groups. For example, group number one, we have five students today are going to share or to post their vid videos um, in the uh, uh, face, uh, I mean, uh, WhatsApp group. And we have to give feedback, all of us, for one day. The second day, another five trainees are going to share their videos, and then we give feedback. The third day, et cetera, we did like this. Each, 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 uh, uh, I mean, each day, five trainees will record the video and uh, um, and they share it um, on WhatsApp group. If you think it's a good idea to record the video and share it on WhatsApp group, and then we give you the feedback, or you can do it live online here. You see my point, you can do it online. Uh, here, um, uh, I need your, uh, I mean, uh, your answers. What do you think? Do you, do you want to do it online or you record it? Since said the recording is better, all right. Huda online, Safa online, okay. Zahra recorded, Idrisi recording, Ilham recorded is better, okay. Hanan recording, had the online, had the uh, Mustafa both. I think both is okay, but recording is better. Aisha, okay. Ashraf online better because it's going to be interactive. Great. Ahmed the recording. Recording is better, Bashira. So I the majority said the recording. Anyway, I'm going to share the, the there is a website for uh, voting. It's poll everywhere, poll everywhere. And then based on that, you are going to choose either online or recording. But up to now, the majority said the recording is better. Okay. Great. So it's clear so far about the micro teaching. Now the deadline, please. All of you, you should finish doing the micro teaching this coming Friday. So this coming Friday is the deadline. Okay, all of you. So from now on, you have to think about a certain 
lesson and you choose one subscale, two subscales, one stage, and you work on it. The time between five to 10 minutes. For me, if you would, if you like to record it, if you want to record it, if we agreed on recording the micro teaching or your videos, no more five minutes, no more five minutes. Because if you record it and you want to post it or share it on social media, it's gonna take too much time. Yes, that was at Friday 7th. Yes, this Friday. Yeah. Or if, yeah, we can, we, uh, I may, I may extend the deadline to Monday. Uh, Bashir said, is micro teaching also a group task? No, the micro teaching is about you, to see your strength and weaknesses. It's about you, only you. So let's agree on next Monday. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give you extra time, enough time. So next Monday, all of you should um, do the micro teaching. Okay, I guess you, you, on the weekend, you will have enough time to prepare, all right? I sent you last time uh, on WhatsApp group an article about uh, uh, micro teaching. Please, we need to have a good idea about what do we mean by micro teaching, why we have to do micro teaching, etc. Okay, great. So that's enough about the, the assignment and the micro teaching. Okay, so no questions so far? Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so I guess that's enough about this one. About the micro teaching. All right, so. <clears throat> so let me share the my screen. Okay. Yeah, so today's session will be about classroom management. Okay, yeah, but before um, diving into this topic, I would like you to remind me again what we covered last time. Yes, anyone to talk? I'm gonna give you the floor. We will have five to seven minutes reviewing what we did last time. Anyone to talk? What are the major points we discussed last time? So Aisha, okay. Yes, use the mic, Aisha, please. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Hello? Do you hear me? Yes, do you hear me? Yes, the mic, uh, use the mic, Aisha. Make sure that the mic is on. Yes, it is, do you hear me? Okay, so let's go to, I guess there's a problem with Aisha's mic. Uh, Najia, yes, please, use the mic. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hello, Najia. Yes, can you hear me, sir? Problem. Let me go to Huda. Yes, Huda. Use the mic. Uh, hello. So yesterday we talked about listening planning. Yes, I can hear you. I can't hear you. Hello. I cannot hear them. Let me see what's wrong. What's the problem? Hello. I cannot hear. So do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, but I cannot, I can't hear you. Let me stop sharing first and then I go back and see what's wrong. 
Yes, Huda, can you try again? Let me see. Can you try again? Oh, yeah, my, my, the mic was, Hello? Uh, yeah. yeah, I hear you now. So yesterday we talked about lesson planning and we said that it's a roadmap and uh, it's a guide uh, having plans. And uh, we talked about also flexibility and variety in lesson planning. Uh, for flexibility, we said that uh, it is the adaptation of material and activities. And for variety, it's about everything, the, the differentiated uh, activities. And we also tackled some questions that we should ask uh, when uh, lesson plan when uh, planning. Uh, for example, what am I teaching? What uh, am I? Uh, who am I teaching? And uh, how will I teach uh, something? And also, we talked about the importance of uh, lesson planning. Uh, the importance of lesson planning. For example, self-confidence, guidance, organization, and interest, and evaluation. This is what I grasped from yesterday uh, yeah, session. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Great. Yes, uh, Aisha, can you add something else? Okay, sir. So for yesterday's session, we have covered uh, how to plan a lesson. So we have said that uh, a lesson plan is not only important for uh, novice teachers, but also for uh, the professional ones. We have also said that um, teachers must be flexible and adaptable to the materials and activities. And uh, it's a must for the teachers to vary the, uh, vary the techniques and the materials and uh, the tasks in the EFL and the ESL classes so that uh, they can avoid the boredom and to satisfy, to satisfy all the different uh, learning styles. We have also mentioned that um, lesson plans' uh, main components are uh, objectives, activities, timing, uh, unexpected uh, problems, stages, and so on. Very interesting. Thank you. Great. Yes, Miriam. Yes, so we've seen that in order to plan a good lesson, techniques, activities, and materials should be varied. For example, using only one technique or one activity may not cover all students' needs. Also, we have seen uh, why lesson planning is important. For example, uh, it's uh, planning a good lesson uh, creates self-confidence and interest. Uh, also, we have seen what should be included in the lesson plan. For example, the objectives, the stages, uh, the production, assessment, and anticipated problems. Wonderful. Yeah, that's really interesting. So remember, we said that when you are planning your lesson, the first thing that you should start with is your objectives. It's number one. Ah, okay. Then you think about the materials, the activities, etc. Okay. And we said a good lesson plan must be based on three elements. Can you remind me what are the three elements? A good lesson plan must be based on three. Safa, yes, please use the mic. Yes, uh, the good lesson plan. Yes. Uh, the the lesson plan is based on uh, flexibility, the changes that may be and uh, Yeah, there's a problem with the mic. Yeah, I hear you now. Flexibility. Uh, uh, so, so, number one, can you repeat again? Number one is? Flexibility. Uh -huh, number two? Variety. Number three? Authenticity. Excellent. Yes, thank you, Safa. Yes, so a good lesson plan must be based on, number one, flexibility. Yes, you have to adapt, you have to change, you have to expect something may be wrong. Number two, variety. Variety of what? Variety of materials, variety of techniques, variety of teachers' roles, variety of instructions, 
variety of everything. And number three is authenticity. You should bring authentic materials, a video. Okay, foreigners are speaking, okay. So bring in um, authentic material. These are the three elements, okay. Authentic materials, being flexible, and you should vary your materials, ways of teaching, methods, etc. Great, okay. And we said, <clears throat> Timing is very important and it depends on each activity. As you, uh, as you saw last time, there was a problem with, the, with the, the lesson plan. The teacher gave 15, I guess, 15 minutes for the presentation stage. 15, maybe uh, it's too much. It's too much for that type of lesson. So timing is very important. Basically, we give much time for practice and production. This is the rule. We give much time for practice and production. Presentation stage maybe is gonna take less time, okay. All right, good. I guess that's what we covered. Yeah, Sharazad, do you wanna say something? Yeah, yes, good morning everyone. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yes, I have a question. Yes, please. Okay. Sir, is it necessary for the teacher to follow uh, to follow uh, the lesson plan step by step? Or to work, to work on it very really? Question. Yeah, very interesting question. Yeah, this question to all of you, what do you think? Do you think that the teacher should follow the lesson plan step by step? What do you think? Any volunteer to elaborate? Okay, so let's see Sumaya, yes, please. Uh, yeah, the teacher, I think that the teacher shouldn't be slave to the, to, the lesson, to the lesson plan, but he should be uh, creative, should be active, as you, uh, you said uh, before, that he used uh, the, the flexibility, the variety of materials, and yeah. Good, that's interesting idea. So the teacher should not be a slave, okay. You should be creative because it depends on the situation. Preparing at home, you are at home. You are just preparing and expecting and guessing, etc. Okay. Now, when you put these preparations or these ideas in your um, lesson plan, when you put them into action, it's reality. It's another situation. So you may change, you may adapt. Okay, interesting. So it depends. Basically, um, you can follow the, uh, I mean, the steps of the lesson plan. If things, if things go well, yeah, it's okay to follow. But if the presentation stage was not clear enough for your learners, then you should not follow. You should not move to the, I mean, to, to the practice stage. Maybe you have to adapt, you have to change, you have to modify. So it depends on the situation in which you are teaching exactly like okay. All right. Great. So no more questions? Okay, so let's start our today's session and will be about classroom management. Uh, and here it's very interesting. We have collocations, two words that go together. Classroom management. Classroom, is that is what class, stands for what classroom? Can you write the chat box? Classroom stands for what? Room stands for what? Place for of teaching, good Bashira, the place. Wonderful, the time managing. Uh, so let's start with classroom. Place where students learn. The environment with have said, great. The location, as I've said, Aisha, learning physical environment. Wonderful. Sitting, Mir Miriam said, okay. Great, place a small community. Wonderful, Samir, I like this one. Small community, great. The city in Mohadis, Imad, a room where students and the teacher meet. Excellent, thank you, Imad, I like this one. So the classroom is a place, and then there is, or there are two people, 
two types of people, students and teachers. Oh, sorry, students and teacher, and a teacher. Good. Now, when we say classroom, it sounds like it's, a, it's an ideal place. It's an ideal place. It's a place where students go to the classroom and the teacher also goes to the classroom and then the teacher teaches and the learners learn. Wow, it's an ideal place. But then there is a second term, management, which means that there is something wrong. Okay, there is something wrong may happen. People have got different attitudes, different personalities, different backgrounds. So we say differences may lead to problems. Okay, then we have management, how to manage. To manage what? To manage students' behavior, time, lessons, etc. Okay, so here classroom management means that you are not going to find an ideal place for learning, for teaching but you may have some difficulties, you may have some challenges, you may have some problems. And here you have to know about the skills of managing your classes. Okay. So let me move to the next one. So let me tell you a story, okay. I've been teaching for more than 13, 13 years, yes. Um, when I, when, it, uh, when I talk about classroom management, I found, uh, I guess, two, two serious challenges with my students, okay. One in 2009, um, I still remember it was my second year of teaching in 2009, and uh, a group of students, okay, troublemakers, they challenged me, they didn't want to, to leave the classroom, and they said very bad words, okay. It was, I was at that time still a novice teacher, okay. Hopefully I could re, uh, solve the situation, okay, because I got the training, okay. And uh, yeah, and again, the students were, uh, I mean, they learned from the lesson, okay. And they came back and they apologized, etc. Okay, It was a very serious situation. And after four years, again, I had the same problem in another place. Uh, some troublemakers, again, the, the, the purpose was just to challenge the teacher to create troubles because they were low achievers. They had nothing to do in class. They, they couldn't understand. So to, to show to the, to, to the rest of the class that we are here, they created troubles. And hopefully I could solve the problem. Sometimes if I couldn't solve the problem, then I resort to the administration or to their families. But from the very beginning, I try to solve the problem by myself in the classroom, okay? If it is beyond my will, then there are other strategies, okay? I mean, here you can include the administration, their parents, etc. Which means that you are, when you are teaching to be a good teacher or a bad teacher, experience or not, you will find challenges. You will find problems. And here, the best of the best is to know about the classroom management, how? And by experience, hopefully I didn't have, or I didn't face um, problems because I, I learned how to manage from the, from the spot, from the very uh, beginning, okay? And you are going to share, I'm going to share with you some skills, techniques of uh, uh, managing your classes and I, I'm sure that you know a lot of stories about school violence. Some teachers were beaten physically, some students were beaten physically, etc. Okay. And we don't want to see that result. We don't want to, I mean to, to have that result um, in the end. Okay. <clears throat> now situation. I want someone to read we have two teachers, Nancy and Murad. Any volunteer to read the to read the first situation. So Mustafa was the first one. Uh, Mustafa. Okay, first of all, hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Perfect. Uh, situation number one. Uh, Nancy has been teaching for two years. She believes that teacher must be lively and amusing. However, she was regarded by her students, nothing than an entertainer. She later started to face discipline problems in her classes. 
because their students want to have uh, fun in all lessons. Great. Yeah. The second situation. Okay. Yes, uh, Siham. What Murad has been teaching for three years. Yeah, please he speak up. Okay. Murad has been teaching for three years. He believes that teachers must be serious. He stated that students come to school for learning, not for fun. Murad also said that his students are very quiet in class, that there is no interaction. Great. Now, I want you to compare two situations, okay? And who do you agree or disagree with and why? And number two, what issues do Nancy and Murad face in their classes? Number three, what should be done if you were in their positions? Yes, five minutes, you read the situations carefully and then you answer the questions. Yes, please.
right, so let's discuss now. Anyone to answer number one, who do you agree or disagree with and why? Any volunteer or you can write in the chat box. So uh, Emma says, I don't agree with both teachers due to lack of seriousity in the first situation and excessive series in the second one. All right, so let's see Ilham Saeed. Okay, yes, Ilham, use the mic. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I would like to say that I disagree with both of them because uh, their way of keeping students organized and focused is not appropriate at all. All right, that's interesting. Thank you. Great. Very interesting idea. Uh, Huda, yes, please. Uh, I disagree with both of the teachers because there is no interaction during the, the session and there is uh, more discipline problems in the first situation. That's why I disagree with them. Both. All right. Thank you. Yes, uh, Zahra. Yeah, for me, I agree with some points in Nancy's and Morat. Like, for example, I believe that the class should be lively and amusing. But in the same time, I believe that the teacher should be serious in his class. So for them, they, they should have like enforced positive behaviors. And also for Morat should have like enforced like um, to have like lively, amusing class. I Very interesting. Great. And Wafa here said, I don't agree with anyone because it's, it must be a balance. Thank you. Thank you, Wafa, between teaching and entertainment. Great. Yes, sir. Uh, Shahrazad. Yeah, Shahrazad, you can use the mic. Yes, do you hear me? Yeah. For me, I disagree with both because the teacher should be serious at, at, at some times and, uh, and funny one at uh, other times. The teacher should be, should be in between. Very good. So in between, there must be a balance. Wonderful. Miriam? Yes, I think that both teachers need to question their way of teaching. Uh, Nancy, she's being too lively and amusing, so students uh, think she's just having fun and not being serious. Uh, Murad is too serious that his students are quiet but not participating. So this proves the idea that stress and fear hinders learning. So there should be a balance between uh, entertainment and uh, seriousness. Wonderful, thank you. Mohadi said we should make a good report, but meanwhile keep some distance with students. Wonderful, Aisha. There must be a source of equality between learning and entertainment. Wonderful. Mustafa, I partly agree with Nancy, but I disagree with Murad. Both teachers should be flexible. All right, interesting. That's nice. Ashraf Dikdak, yes, please use the mic. Uh, I disagree with both. I think uh, Nancy and Morad represent a dichotomy or different extremes. Nancy overused amusement to the extent that she lost control of her class. On the other hand, Morad was being so serious, leaving no room for lightening the mood and engaging the students in the teaching learning process, and thus shutting down any kind of interaction. That's nice. Interesting. Thank you. Samir said that Building rapport with students is important. The teacher should wear many hats. Wonderful, thank you. Yes, Miriam, the last one. Yes, please. Use the mic. My uh, hands raised. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no problem. So here, the problem is with, uh, with entertaining and being serious, firm. Okay, which means that we, as Wafa said, I like it, we should make a balance. There are some situations in which we can have fun, but there are some situations or activities we should be serious about teaching and learning. Okay, now what should be done if you were in their positions is to make a balance or to strike a balance. 
Okay, great. What issues do Nancy and Murad face in their classes? The issues, issues are classroom management issues. The first one, there is noise. Why there is noise? Because the teacher um, was very, uh, was not very serious all the time. All the time using games, having fun, music, etc. Okay. So students did not take these things seriously. They thought it's just for fun. The second situation, Murad, he was very confirmed, very firm, very strict. So students were scared in, in, in his classes and they could not interact. They were very kind, very, very silent, okay. And classroom management is not about behavior only, but also is about how to motivate, how to engage your learners to participate, okay. How to create a positive learning environment, okay. Great, so let's move on to the next slide and see. Now, the feedback here is that to teach effectively, the teacher classroom management must be, must be able to inspire confidence in the students. So here the key word is to, the key word is to inspire, to inspire confidence, very important. Students should be confident. Okay. As educators, we must know when to be firm. Another keyword is when. When to be serious, firm. And when to have fun, balance, and leave the students' work alone. In other words, the teacher must be flexible. Flexibility. So Murad was not flexible and play different roles. As Samira said, a very interesting expression, the teacher should wear different hats. So different roles. According to each activity and each situation, games, having fun, funny things. Now, practice, grammar, um, I mean, pr presenting or something like that, we have to be serious, okay? without being dominant or leaving students uncertain. All right, so these are the keywords that we have to take into account. Yeah, no comments so far? Iman said we can never learn when we are either scared or disrupted by others. Yeah, also we can, we, we can never learn when we are having Fun, too much fun. All right. Yes. So I guess there is a question here. Someone want to ask? Okay. Yes, Mustafa. Yes, please use the mic. Okay. Uh, sir, don't you think that uh, in most of uh, uh, Moroccan uh, classes, that you should, uh, I mean, there is a troublemaker, then uh, he should be like the victim. It's the first one who makes trouble. It's like when students are teasing you as a teacher, then you take the first one as um, you you teach you teach the first one a lesson. Then everyone then they will take you in a serious way, and they have faced that because uh, especially when you uh, if you started in a funny way in the first session and uh, as a lovely person and so on and so forth, then they take you for guaranteed. Then they, uh, most of the time they don't respect you especially troublemakers but for example if there is one some because i, I use I, I mean i used to teach classes i still remember once uh, at the institute of tourism there was a person he was making trouble then he studied with me and uh, like uh, he was making troubles because he he studied with me in uh, secondary school then he still remembers me because he was a friend of mine. Then he was making a lot of, of troubles. Then I said to him, uh, Mr. Mosif, you have studied with me and uh, you are studying again here. So um, I was your friend, now I'm your teacher. So you know me very well and I know you very well, so be careful. You know, since that it's like um, he felt ashamed or I don't know. Then after that, he was disciplined. He was good all the year because you should take the, I mean, the first one as the victim and the rest will respect you. Even if you, you switch from being funny and, uh, and being serious, 
you are not going to have any troubles. All right, yeah, very interesting situation. Yes, but uh, Mustafa, I wouldn't prefer victim, okay? Because victims, uh, it sounds like it's um, gonna be unfair. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be um, the first students, okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna implement my classroom management rules, okay? And the first one maybe should learn and others should learn about his um, behavior. And uh, the first students, I mean, who is going to make troubles, I'm going to stick to my rules so as everyone can see how I'm going to deal with all of them. But I would like to avoid victim because victim sounds like I'm gonna be unfair compared to uh, other ones, but it's really great. Um, you should show your students that you are a good person and you want something good for your learners. However, however, there are some limits we have to avoid. Uh, oh, sorry, we don't have to break. There are some limits that we don't, we should not go beyond. For example, all the time in the beginning of the school year, I said to, to my students, all trainees or um, future teachers, I'm a very kind person. I'm a very kind person, but sometimes I'm cruel. Okay, so very kind, but sometimes cruel. How? When you break the rule. It means that there is no respect between you and me. I respect you, you respect me. I teach you, you learn. Okay, so there are rules we play. But if you break these uh, limits, then it's full stop, then it's the end. And you have to implement it from time to time. However, we, we go back again to, it depends on the situation and you have to be flexible, etc. Now, the first time students make noise, ignore. The second time they make noise, ignore. If they insist, then you stop and you address the problem. Either outside the classroom, you can invite the students, okay, between you and him or her, or you can, etc. So the first time, all the time, ignore, because you cannot solve the problem from the very beginning unless it's serious. And we will talk about this one in the coming slides. We will talk about, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, how can you uh, plan for your first session with students? What are the rules they should respect? Or what are the, we call them the conduct, the code of conduct, etc. In the coming uh, slides, we are going to discuss all these um, issues. Okay, but uh, I see your situation, Mustafa, and I agree with you. Sometimes we have to to um, to fix the problem, okay, so as not to get to get worse. Hanan said this is why it's important to establish a code of conduct. Okay, Najia said none like to be a victim. Okay. Zahra, I dislike victim idea. It shouldn't be like that at all, okay? Yeah, so it depends. Let me move to the next slide. Okay. Now, classroom management. Can someone define? Can you write in the chat box one sentence? What do we mean by class? What is classroom management? What is classroom management? Any volunteer? So CM said how to manage and keep the, the class controlled. Wonderful. Zara, yes, please use the mic. So yeah, yeah, me, an effective yeah. lesson. Yes, please. For me, it's like uh, the ways that you use to enforce positive uh, behaviors and to take away those negative ones. It also means uh, the way you interact with your students, the ways that uh, the tables are set in the class and everything like all, all, all right. what the teacher does during the class, uh, apart from teaching. Very interesting. So you talked about the board, the, the sitting, that's interesting. Great. Uh, Mustafa uh, Muhammad said, set rules to manage the classroom. So may I make an effective lesson? Mustafa, a set of steps that a teacher may apply to ensure, sorry, 
to make the learning atmosphere good and suitable. Bashira, to ensure the teaching, uh -huh. Zahra, to, make, to manage behaviors, a teaching aspect which deals with conducting and organizing a classroom. Great. Imad is the technique of controlling and teaching a class without any lack of discipline. Imad, the art of how to control and manage the teaching and learning process in a systematic and comfortable way in class. Wonderful. Najia, how to organize your classroom. Great. It's about making a comfortable world of studying. Karima, classroom management is the scale of organizing and managing the class having a friendly, relaxed manner, manner and maintaining discipline. Okay, great. So let's see here, very interesting definitions. Now, the classroom management, which is the scale of organizing. And some of you, or the majority of you mentioned this one, organizing. All right. Yes, and managing, to manage. The, and having a friendly, some talk about creating positive, relax, feel comfortable, and maintaining this discipline. Wonderful. So you, all of you mentioned these uh, keywords. Samira said techniques. Yes. So to organize, you need the techniques. To manage, you need techniques. To create a, a friendly environment, learn environment, you need techniques. Wonderful. Okay. So it's about organizing, managing the class, having a friendly, relaxed manner, and maintaining discipline. And this what both Murad and um, the, other the other teacher's name. What's her name? I forgot. Murad and, can you remind me of the name of the teacher? Nancy, thank you, Miriam. Uh, I have a bad memory, by the way, okay. All right, thank you, Hussein, okay. Yes, sir. Both of them lacked this uh, managing the class. For example, the, uh, uh, I mean, Nancy, students made a lot of troubles um, for Murad uh, he had no discipline problems but students didn't feel relaxed and uh, did not interact so organizing managing creating friendly relaxed okay and maintaining discipline issues or discipline etc yeah sorry maintaining discipline great now let me move to the next slide the next one, yes, Charles, that's that to control. Managing is part of controlling. Managing is the umbrella term. Okay, the next slide. Now, classroom management, as uh, uh, Zara said, seating arrangement, the, the chairs, the tables. How would you arrange the tables? Face to face, circles, super tables in pairs, like a meeting, etc. Voice projection, the teacher's voice. Do you think that your voice can be heard? Yes, sir, in the back? Students, okay, sitting at the back or um, can, can hear you or not? Teacher's roles, are you going to play one role or different roles? So you should play different roles according to different situations and activities. Instructions. Do you give clear, simple, concise instructions or you confuse your students? You give them the instructions, then they ask teacher, we don't understand, can you explain the exercise? If students tell you, please, can you explain the exercise? Your instructions were not clear enough for them. Students' names, do you call students with you, 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 or you address using their names? Remember, when you use students' names, you feel happy. You feel confident. I still remember when I was studying at the high school, when the teacher said, Hussein, I really feel so happy, okay? But when the other teacher said, you, I felt like I'm um, being accused. Uh, it's you. So you have to know how to memorize students' names. What I do from the very beginning, I give them some work, some um, uh, paper, okay. And I tell them to write their name and to fold it and to push in front of them. And I can see for one week, they write the name and they put it in front of them or on the desk. So when I see the person, I see his name. 
Okay, Muhammad, Layla, Karima. Then I memorize the names. One week, I finish memorizing the names. So when I address, when I, I, I address them using their names, it's part of classroom management. It's part of motivating. It's part of engaging learners. So when we say the student's name, you respect him or her, and you motivate him. When you start with you, you make students feel not comfortable as being accused of. Okay, great. Now, the rapport between teachers and students. The first class, the first session, you have to think about how to, to establish a good relationship based on respect, understanding, um, uh, working hard, etc. Okay. So how can you establish a good rapport? Okay. Board work. The white board, the black board, must be well organized for students to know what to write. This part for vocabulary, this part for rules, this part for correction. So they should know each space stands for a purpose. It must be well organized. And you are going to discuss all these things. Okay. So remember, these are the elements or the major elements for classroom management. All right, good. Now, I want you to, to look at these two uh, boards. Can you compare? What's the difference between board number one and board number two? So you see the chat box. So one is Missy. Samira said Missy. Ronaldo or Missy? I'm just kidding, Samira. This is what I use with my kids, with my students. They say this person is Missy. I said Missy or Ronaldo, just to create a, a fun, a fun learning environment. So number one is not organ. Number one is not organized. One different organization. As we in second, well organized. Iman the second is more organized. Huda, the board number one is a mess. Yes, okay, great. And in Chisar number two, well organized. And I'm sure if you go back to um, the stage of B, I mean, if you go back to high school when you were a student, I'm sure one of your teachers designed the board like number one and some teachers like number, uh, board number two. Yes or no? What do you think? As we said, yeah. Mini, Najee said mini. Shah said no, never good. Ashraf, yes. Huda, yes. Okay, mostly number one. Okay. <laughs> okay, Karima, yes. Muhammad, number one, may contain very important information, but are not organized. Yes, Miriam, do you, do you want to say something, Miriam? Okay. Yes, Miriam. Yes, I just have a question. How important is uh, organ organization? Because I'm personally more on the first board side. So you prefer the first one? I don't prefer it, but uh, it's how my board turns out. <laughs> oh, Kimberium. Good. So today's list is very helpful for you. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, it sounds that number one, there are too much information, too much information. Now, she has that even, even at the university, even for lecturing, uh, there must not be like that. Even when you give a lecture, you don't write like that, okay? Because if you have a look at the first uh, whiteboard, you will see that there are no spaces. Remember this one. When we talk about board work, we talk about spaces. Each space should stand for a purpose. You divide it into parts. You divide it into parts. And each part 
stand for something. For example, I can divide the board into three parts. The small part or the small space is only for pre-teach vocabulary. When I'm teaching reading, I teach vocabulary. When I'm teaching grammar, I may teach vocabulary. When I'm teaching speaking, I may teach vocab, okay? So this is a small part. Now my learners know that the small space, the right side, on my right side, is for vocabulary. You see what I mean? So for the first whiteboard, I guess there, there are no spaces. That's why it's not well organized. Okay. Yes, Miriam. Do you want to add something? Okay. Great. So we can say that the second one sounds more organized than the first one. We can say that the first one, there are or there is too much information. Remember, something very important about the board work. When you write on the board, are you going to write everything or you are going to write the most important points? What do you think on the whiteboard? Hussein said the most important. Yeah, most, yeah, basically we write very important things on the white. We cannot write everything. So we write something that students don't have in the textbook, okay, or in their workbook. So something important, like correction, British vocabulary, examples, you see. But writing too much information, very confusing for learners. Great. So let's move on to the next slide. Let's see here. Now, the most effective ways of using the board, number one, you divide the board into parts. This is uh, the first part. Basically, I divide my, my board into three parts. The first part is for examples and rules. The second part for the practice exercise and correction. The third part is for pre teach vocabulary and homework or assignments. So three parts, all the time I do the same. But it depends on you how, can you, how you organize your board. So here, the first tip, divide into spaces. Number two, each part or each space should have a purpose. The purpose is for teach vocabulary. Vocabulary, sorry. The purpose is for correction. The purpose is for um, generating the rule. The purpose is for giving examples. The purpose is for explanations, etc. So what's the purpose for each part? Number three, this is very important. And it happens to me many times. Pay attention to spelling. We don't want our learners to learn mistakes. We, we want them to learn the language correctly. You may write words and you may make spelling mistakes. So please, you can use your phone, dictionary. There are some dictionary apps here. If you are not sure, we are human beings. Sometimes we are exhausted or uh, we don't have enough sleep. We may make spelling mistakes. If you, don't, if you are not sure, make sure and use your phone. Then you can correct. It's number one, because students should learn things correctly. Number two, when you invite students to go to the board and to write the correction, please keep an eye on what they are writing. They write mistakes. They write a lot of mistakes. Even they take the book. They take the student's book out with them and they go to the board and they start writing and they make spelling mistakes. Your job as a teacher, whenever you invite students to go to the board to write answers, keep an eye, watch what they are writing and you correct. Because if they write things wrong, wrongly, other students will copy these things and then they will learn wrong things. Number four, avoid <coughs> writing 
too many sentences. They make students feel confused. Write something important, something they need. Right. Number five, avoid letting the board become too cluttered, not too well organized. The board must be well arranged, well organized. So as students know, the purpose of the right part is for vocabulary. The purpose of, uh, I mean, the space on the left side is for examples and rules. The middle or in between, it's about, I mean, correction, etc. You see my point? So no question, no comment so far for the board. Yeah, Mustafa has got a question. Yes, please, Mustafa. Use the mic. Yes, Mustafa? Yes. Yes, please. Sometimes even if you write the correct uh, spelling, then uh, students might copy it because they are in a hurry or something like this. They might copy it to their um, uh, copy books uh, in a wrong way. So how you can solve such things? Because I, I faced uh, some situation, especially with um, uh, low achievers. I don't know whether they don't uh, they don't pay attention while uh, copying from the board, or I don't know the problem. But sometimes when I check their copy books, I find that they made mistakes that I did not make. Especially, I mean, uh, after after finishing the loss, which means we did not even erase the board yet. Great, interesting point. Yeah, interesting point. Yeah, basically, this is what uh, uh, I mean. What happened to to me? or to my students, I observed that uh, by the, I mean, in the end of the school year, I, I found that students write the, the date wrongly. Uh, November, they write at the end R and E like French. September, R and E, okay. So even I write on the board November, ER, September, ER, October, but they wrote the dates wrongly. So I learned from this situation. So when I tell them to copy their lessons, I monitor and I see if they make some mistakes and I uh, raise their attention. So there's a difference between French and English. And after two weeks or three weeks, I collect their copy books and I correct them. When I correct them, I, uh, I mean, uh, I take notes about the mistakes they all make. So here, the strategies that you can use to avoid these mistakes made by students. Number one, once they are writing, it's good to monitor, to walk around the classroom between, and you observe, you see if they make some mistakes or not. Number two, after two or three weeks, you should collect their notebooks, okay, or copy books, and you correct them, okay? And then you give them back to them, it's the best way. But the most important here, you, you will find that not all students make, make all, uh, I mean, all of them, they make the same mistake. I mean, the spelling mistake, but just some of them. But the worst is when you, as a teacher, when you, when you, you make the, the spelling mistake, and then all the classroom, all students copy that mistake. This is the, the worst. And we as teachers should avoid. Or when the students um, uh, go to the board and they make spelling mistakes and then the rest of the classroom copy these mistakes, okay? So this is what we don't want our learners to, um, to learn, okay? Great. So, next slide. Now, the board work, what are the questions you have to ask? Number one, can all the students see the board? That's why I said, don't write too many sentences. A lot of sentences, they may not see, okay? So which means your handwriting must be clear, big size. Number two, do they need to see it in your lesson? Do they need to see it in your lesson? Yes, and number three, will there be times when you want your students to write on the board? Yes, very effective strategy. You have to invite learners also to write on the board, to write correction, uh, I mean, to write some uh, keywords, to write some in interesting information on the board. Yeah, you motivate them. They like going to the board and, uh, uh, and, uh, and to write. They really like it. So these are the, the, the questions you have to ask when, it's, when we are dealing with the board work. All right, good. Now, grouping, the second part. 
of the classroom management is about grouping students. And as you see here, we have different groups, different shapes. Can you name some types of grouping students? Do you know some, some examples, some types? You can write the chat box. Yes, can you give some examples about this grouping? How do you group students? Mustafa said no, okay, a round, good, like a circle, we can say circle. Yeah, they can sit in a circle, good. No achievers with high achievers to learn from each other, great, Miriam. You mix them, wonderful. Uh, U-shape, okay, U-shape, wonderful, like a meeting, fronting. Okay, mixing, Hussein, Hindu said, mixing, great. All right. But here, uh, we, we are not talking about system arrangement, but we are talking about, it's a kind of mode of work, circle, solo work, great Hanan, according to their learning style, Huda said, wonderful, okay. So you are talking about the pair work, group work, uh, et cetera, okay. So let's see here. So grouping students, we can group them in a group of group work. They work in groups four, five, or pair work, or individual work, or whole class work. So these are the, the types of grouping students. Okay, we are going to um, talk in details about these um, types of grouping students, but after the, the break. Okay, so we will have 15 minutes, so enjoy your break. After that, we continue. Thank you.
let's start again. I hope you enjoyed your break. Okay, so, so we were talking about classroom management and it's very important to manage the class is to organize or to group students. And there are different types. We talked about uh, group work, pair work, individual work, and uh, whole class work. All right. <clears throat> so let's see here the second, the next slide, sir. So here, I want you to complete. I want you to complete the table. So here we have grouping students, whole class work, group work, pair work, individual work. Then we have, of course, for each type, there are advantages and disadvantages, okay. Uh, let's start with uh, whole class work. Uh, we are going to do it together. Then I'm going to give you some time for group work, pair work, uh, individual. So what do you think about whole class work? What is good about it? The whole class. Any suggestions? Something good about it? Collaboration. Very good. They, they work together. Collaboration. I'm using. Yes. Wonderful. Siham. Cooperation. Abdurrahim. Great. Yes. All students get motivated to take part. Wonderful. Huda, I was waiting for this time saving. Great. Hanan, it's good at the presentation stage. Wonderful. Muhammad, everyone collaborates. Wonderful. Abdurrahim, competition. Interesting. Haja, there is interaction. Great. So there is interaction, collaboration, communication, time saving, quicker and easier organization. Great, Karima. It's very easy. Okay. Uh, Mustafa, all the students are active. Great. Now, let's switch to the negative points. Disadvantages, something not good about it. What do you think? Bad when assessing students, Zahra said. Huda, uh, shy students are involved. It's something good or bad? Something good. Let's talk about disadvantages. Excellent, Mustafa, noise. We will, we will, the whole class, all of them are participating. A lot of noise, like a stadium. Not all students have the chance to talk. Helen said, uh -huh, what about noise? Miriam, bad when there are too many students. Wonderful, Iman, rely on others. Yeah, some students are not doing their task. Some members are relying on other members. Great, not taking permission. Rahim, Imad, monitoring. Is it disadvantages? Okay. Bashira said, not good for evaluating, all right. Yes, Karima, reduce opportunities for students to speak, maybe not all of them. Hajar, some do not participate. Good. All right, these are wonderful, um, uh, I mean, suggestions, okay, about advantages and disadvantages, great. Now, I'm going, I would like to give you five minutes. I want you please take notes, take your notebook, pen, and write. Group work, positive points, negative points, pair work, the same, and individual work, five minutes. Then we um, share or compare in a chat box. Good, five minutes and discuss.
All right, so let's correct. So in the volunteer, let's start with group work. Can someone, yes, uh, Hanan, use the mic please for group work. Hello teacher, can you hear me? Hello, yes. Okay, so for uh, the group work, uh, it's create it's cre a sense of belonging to a group, uh, cooperation between students, they interact with one another. It is um, helpful, especially for... Great, right, show. Yes, Hanan, number one, Hanan, please. Yeah, group work. Number one, you said belong to the group. Group work, advantages. You say one by one. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking about group work, sir. Hello. Oh my God. You, you just the first advantage. Second advantage, etc. Yeah, one by one. Okay, so uh, the first advantage is uh, students have plenty of chance to see something on their own, especially for shy learners. They have time or they have the opportunity to talk to see something on their own. Yeah, there was an issue with internet connection. Yes, Hanel, can you use the mic again? <clears throat> can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so for group work uh, advantages, so learners have plenty of chance to see something on their own, especially uh, for shy learners. Great. Uh, well, uh, disadvantage, uh it's it's an uh, uh, there is a lot of noise and sometimes teacher can lose control over uh, his class very interesting so great this for group work all right thank you yes other volunteers do you have something to add so Sharazat said sense of competition between groups all right aisha yeah Okay, sir, so for uh, group work, for the advantages, there is collaboration. So students work uh, all together in collaboration. And there is also the second advantage is that uh, the groups must be mixed between uh, high learners and low learners. For the disadvantages, the, there is noise, lots of noise, especially if the groups are uh, over five uh, or six members. And it's also time consuming. It takes time to work uh, in groups. Great. As Mustafa said, also said it's time consuming. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yes. Now, for pair work, others, can you write in the chat box or you can speak? Okay. Pair work, what are the positive points? Okay. Huda, Khiyata, can you raise your hand, please? To see. Yes, use the mic, please, Huda. For pair work, it is a, a, a good uh, strategy because uh, the students uh, check from each other and uh, can, uh, 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 can help each other in order to do a task. And for the negative side, uh, it's, uh, it's not... Uh, open and uh, it's limited to some uh, it's limited all right thank you yeah and here Idris is something very interesting here we exchange ideas between students wonderful what that encourage each other Ahmed sharing wonderful okay Hussein pair more free interaction great thank you yes now for individual work any volunteer solo work Okay, so solo work. 
So you see Muhammad, yes, please. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah, hello, we hear you, Muhammad. Okay, sir. Uh, for for the advantages of a, of an individual working, uh, it focuses on the task. Students focus on the task. Students are responsible for their answers. There is less noise and good for in the, uh, for students uh, uh, who has the uh, who learn uh, in, in individual learning style as learn individual. All right. Learning style. What is the advantage, sir? Great. Yes. For these advantages, uh, it is time consuming. There is a lack of collaboration, not effective for those who learn uh, based on group learning style, and there is absence of communication. Wonderful. Thank you. That's great. So here Samira said individual work, good for students to concentrate, it's well controlled. Wonderful. Bashira benefits self-reliance, negative points, no bounding, no learning from each other. Okay, great. Iman, yes, please. For pair work, what are the... Uh, uh, Shahrazad is asking about these advantages for pair work. Can someone elaborate? Yes, Iman, use the mic. I said morning. For individual work, it may um, foster uh, autonomy, self-confidence, and self-esteem, raise self-esteem. For the disadvantages, it may raise uh, the selfishness and uh, there is no sense of collaboration, of course. Thank you. Good. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Iman. Now, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to answer Shahrazad's question about pair work. What are the disadvantages of uh, doing pair work? Can you write in the chat box? Hanan. Yes. You want to say something, Hanan? Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, one of uh, the classmates asked about um, the disadvantage of uh, peer work. I think it's uh, noisy as well as, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, not all uh, uh, students uh, uh, not always use uh, the target language. They use their mother tongue uh, and not all uh, mistakes uh, are corrected. All right, that's nice. Thank you. Yeah, so let's see here. Next slide. So for whole class, there is sense of belonging. You belong to a community. Okay. It's advanced class or intermediate class or beginner class, okay. And there is interaction. Quick and easier to organize. It's very easy. These advantages, fewer opportunities for students to speak because the whole class some are speaking, others no. Shy students may not like to speak. They feel shy in front of the whole class. So these are some disadvantages. Now for group work, the group work is that the STT, student talking time is high. Group of four, they are all talking. And here we encourage cooperative learning. We encourage students to work together, collaboration. Personal problems are less problematic than in pairs. I may have a problem with another student, but it's okay because we are, we are working in groups. But if the teacher puts me in pairs with another student that I have a problem with, there is a problem, okay? For disadvantages, it's noisy. Group work is noisy and time consuming. You work in groups, you need at least 10 to 15 minutes. So it's time consuming and takes time to organize and to manage. Some students may dominate the whole discussion. So when you put them into groups, you have to monitor, you have to observe them because you will see that one is doing the whole task, one is talking, one is dominating the whole discussion. Others are just listening, okay. For peer, peer work, 
Number one, STT is very high, like group work. The two ones working in pairs are interacting, communicating, sharing ideas, something very important. They share ideas, they exchange information. And strong students help weaker ones. So on purpose, you have to put students in pairs, the strong, the fast learner with slow learner, the high achievers with low achievers. There's a purpose behind pushing them in pairs. You are the boss. You can, okay, put them in pairs and you can choose these students, go with the other one, etc. Now, there's a problem here about advantages can be noisy. There might be noise. Students may just chat using their mother language. So when you put them in pairs, they may just chat in, talking about family problems, talking about sports, talking about something not related to the, uh, to the classroom again. And some students may find themselves with partners they don't like. You know, as Samira said, it's a small community. And in this community, there are problems, of course. So Karima doesn't like to talk uh, with Sharazad, or Muhammad doesn't like to talk to Hussein, okay? Or Najia doesn't like to talk to Hadda, okay? So there are problems between students in the classroom and you have to be smart enough, okay? You don't have to put them, okay, there. Or you have to put them, but you have to convince them the importance of doing pair work. So it's really an issue, okay? And it happened to my classes, one student said, no, teach, I don't want to uh, work with this student. And the, the other student said, huh, what are, you, what are you saying? And then there was an issue, a problem, okay. So what would you do? Would you uh, avoid uh, part, uh, I mean, putting students in pairs uh, uh, and they don't like each other? Or would you like to put only those students who have a good relationship um, with each other? So it's an issue, okay, when you put students in pairs and you have to make sure that they are uh, well, um, uh, with each other, okay. Individual work allows teacher to respond to individual differences. So when you put them in, the, in individual work, you can respond to their individual differences. You can go to him or her and you can ask him, you can respond to his or her answer, okay. Something interesting about individual work. And it's autonomous learning. learning. So here you have two methods, autonomous learning, and cooperative learning. Cooperative learning is pair work, group work, whole class. And autonomous learning is individual work. And disadvantages, shy students may not like to speak in front of the whole class. They feel embarrassed, they feel shy, etc. Okay, no comments so far? Uh, Marim said, how would I know who likes who? <laughs> It's a good question. Okay. Yes, it's very interesting. So what I do in my classes, um, uh, uh, I, I have to know first that there, is no, there are no issues. Okay. I tell them that this is one family. So we are all brothers, we are all sisters, we have to respect each other. So when I put you with another student, don't deal with the person, but you deal with the situation. It's communication, it's learning the language and I teach them to accept differences. I teach them that when there is a problem, when there's a problem, don't focus on the person, but focus on the problem, on the situation. For example, I, I may say Iman from Algeria doesn't like to work with the Muhadis from Iran. But here, when I put them in pairs, you forget about the problems, about personalities, about people, Muhadis is a person, and Iman as a person, but you focus on the activity. So you have to teach them the principles, the moral values, the global values. When you go outside the, outside the classroom, don't talk with Iman, don't talk with Muhadis. But in my classroom, we are one family. So when you teach them uh, that they have to believe in differences, they have to accept others. I have a problem with you, you as a person but not with the activity. So with both of us, when we work in pairs, we have to work. When you teach them these global values, take it for granted, they would accept because this is, this is your way of teaching. They have to accept the way you teach your learners. 
Samira said sometimes it's a problem of gender. Good. Yes, again, gender is part of believing in differences. You are a girl, you are a boy, but at the end, we are human beings. So we have to believe in differences. We have to accept each other. This is my philosophy when I'm teaching students or trainees. I believe in differences. And as um, Hussein said, variety is the spice of life, okay? My, uh, I mean, my, my uh, sorry, my mother and my um, father, they have different personalities, okay? Sometimes there are issues, sometimes there, there is understanding, but this is life. We have to accept each other. In my classes, we have girls, boys, some students are 18 years old, others 17, others 15, but they accept each other. So when you install this, uh, this principle about accepting others, believing in differences, you won't have problems. Okay. Iman said, though I like Muhadis very much. I'm just giving, <laughs> thank you, Iman. I'm just giving examples, okay, here, okay. Yeah, uh, hopefully we have got a very good family here, yeah. And I'm very proud of you. Bashira said, can we use these grouping techniques apart from production and games? Yes, you, these techniques can be used in all lessons, in all parts of the lesson. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next slide. So when I was talking, Muhadis was not here. I just accepted her. Maybe she had a technical problem and then she came back. All right, so let's move on to the next. Iman, you can tell Muhadis what we were talking about. Great, now, which part of the classroom management does, does the picture show? What do you think? You can write in the chat box. So let me see. So Hajar said, sitting arrangement, wonderful. Typical class. <laughs> it's a very beautiful, well-organized classroom, okay. It's a... <laughs> how to organize the chairs, the tables. So uh, it is about a sitting arrangement. Okay, great. So yes, Aisha said very encouraging classroom to teach and learn. Yeah, which means that the, it's very important when you organize the classroom and when your classroom is well decorated, you motivate students to learn and you as a teacher you are motivated also to to teach okay great Najee said well organized good atmosphere atmosphere for, for learning Karima the position of the students okay great so let's see here it's about sitting arrangements uh, the way in which you organize the position of the students and yourself is of a great importance and largely depends on the following number one space do you have a, a big or a small space type of chairs and tables age of the students nationality students personality so all these are very important when we want to arrange the, the chairs the desk and the tables you have enough space if you have enough space you can do group work if you don't have enough space there is no need 
and the type of the, the chair. Do you have small chairs, big chairs, big tables? And the age of students. If you have old students, I guess there is no need all the time to rearrange the chairs. They cannot stand and put the chairs here in groups. Then the second activity, they go back to pair work. Then the third activity, they have to move to individual work and arrange the chairs. Old people cannot do that. Children, you can keep them move all the time, moving all the time. Okay, so it depends on the age of students. Okay, so look here. When we talk about the physical environment, we talk about sitting. So how do you want the students to sit or sit? What choices are open to you? Choices, spaces. What, what may influence your decision? Are you going to give them a chance to move in your lesson? Why or why not? If it's a group, maybe you want to rearrange the chairs. Uh, where are you going to place yourself? You as a teacher, in front, middle, around the classroom, at the back. Are you going to stand or sit? Where are you in relation to your students? And how will this affect the atmosphere of the room? So these are very important um, questions you may ask. Now, what do the four pictures have in common? Look here, another, another one. What do the four pictures have in common? When we talk about classroom management, So it's C, it's about what? It's about the teacher, as he said, female teachers. The teacher uh, is on the four pictures, Bashira. Now I'm talking about what do the four have in common when talking about classroom management. The teacher position classroom, okay. Buddha discipline, Abdurrahim Burdam, everyone teach with his own way, Burdam. Okay, Bashira, facial expressions. No, up to now, no one could get the right answer. Squeeze your mind. Annoying teacher, Mariam says, Safa, manage the students. No. <laughs> okay. Talking. Oh, Wafa'a. What do you mean by talking? What do you mean by talking? Lack like students interaction, Marim said. Zara, the teacher talking all the time, students feedback, noise, the way teacher talks, Hannah said. TTT is high, speaking activity, Samira. Okay, teacher attitude. So what did you eat in this morning? What did you eat? Please, can you write? <laughs> I'm just kidding, okay. This is the Moroccan way. <laughs> Samira said nothing. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. So this is about voice projection. Voice projection. Okay. So let's see. The picture number one, the teacher is talking. The picture number two, the teacher is talking. Number three, talking. Number four, the teacher has got a problem with her voice. So let's see here, voice projection. How loudly are you going to speak? Sometimes you have to speak loudly, to speak up. Sometimes you have to lower your voice, and why? How important is it that all the students hear and understand one another? And how can you ensure this? So my question, when, when you should speak loudly, when? When should you speak loudly? Yes. 
Now, Muhammad, here we are talking about the teacher. Voice projection for the teacher. One of the good assets, one of the good qualities of uh, um, teachers is to have a good voice projection. Good, Sharazat said, when students make noise, great. Buddha, when there is noise, you are raising an important point. Mustafa, great. Hussein, when there is noise, giving advice, when students are not confused. So when there is noise, I don't think it's a good idea to, to speak louder. So there is noise and, and also you speak louder, please keep quiet, don't make noise. No, it doesn't work with classroom management. You, you become like a fool, like a crazy teacher. Use the, the magic hand, give me five. You just keep quiet and you raise your hand, this one. And then students start observing you and they keep quiet one by one. It's gonna take only one minute. You stand in front of the classroom and you, you do like this. You keep quiet. Then they, but saying keep quiet, don't make noise, shut up. Then you will, you will have a, another issue, okay. So you can raise your voice when you are talking about something very interesting, for example, okay, or very important points. Sharazat said, shut up your mouth, okay. Then other students will do the same. Shut up your mouth, teacher, you too, okay. Because if you don't respect them, take it for granted, some of them will not respect you also. Okay. Zahra said, never say shut up in the classroom. Yes, if you say it, you are no longer a teacher. Okay. I all the time use the magic hand, high five, or I keep quiet and I raise my hand like this and I let them observe me. For one minute, everyone keeps quiet. Okay, great. So this is about voice projection. You have to work on it. For picture number four, look here, picture number four, the teacher has got um, a problem. And sometimes you lose your voice, you are voiceless. However, you go to work. You say, yes, please, keep quiet. Okay, take this in. Yeah, and students cannot hear you. What would you do in this situation? If you, if you are voiceless, and it happens many times to me, what can you do? Can you write in the chat box? <laughs> Very interesting, Miriam, bring a mic, a microphone, wonderful, great idea. Abdurrahim writing, uh -huh. gestures, uh, Mustafa, Hanan, use a mic. <laughs> yeah, great, yeah, maybe. But if you use the mic, you, you may make noise, and the other classes, okay? You may disturb them using bells. Zzz, okay, keep quiet. Bashira, wow. Thank you, Bashira. We are a human being. You are sick. You are voiceless. You cannot speak, okay? Take day one day off, okay? If you could. Because if you go to school and you, uh, you force your voice to speak again, okay you, you aggravate the situation and you may take more time to get your voice back okay so if you are not in a good situation you can take day off if you want to go and teach you can design activities based on something that will not push you to speak okay Zara said i made students help me good abdrahim bring someone to explain <laughs> <laughs> From, you hire someone, you go to the bank and you hire, okay, you borrow. I, I don't think it's a good idea, okay, you bring someone to explain. Maybe in Morocco it's not a good idea. Okay, Mohammed changing city arrangement. Okay. It's like, Abdrahim, you are very funny, okay, bring someone to explain. <laughs> Ah, you mean here from students to explain. I, I thought that I thought that you meant bringing someone else. 
from outside, from the street. Okay. Sharazad used body language. Good. Yeah, body language. Okay. I speak with lower sound. Or you can use a video. They can watch a video and uh, um, uh, reflect on the video, comments, etc. Okay. Najee said better to relax. They off. So it depends. Okay. Muhadis, I speak with lower sound. Okay, good. But it happens. It happens in our classes. It happens. So if you are voiceless, if you have a problem, then don't double a lot of efforts. Design activities that will not push you to speak. Okay. Or as Bashir and Najia, okay, our lazy teachers take day off. Relax. Okay. I'm just kidding, Najia and Bashir. Okay. <clears throat> so let's move on to the next. Then there is a, a report again. One of the, the classroom management that we have to work on is the building a good rapport with students. So rapport between teacher and students, physical position. Are you near your students or separate from them? Your position. Are you sitting behind a desk in front of students, next to students? How does distance and position sitting standing affect your relationship with the students so now explaining maybe you are in front of students monitoring is very near to students eye contact very important don't focus only on one student when you are explained but you maintain the eye contact how important is it to share eye contact with all of your students now if you are explaining and you are focusing only on one girl or one boy, then the student, they say there is something wrong with the teacher. All the time when he explains, he's, fo he's focused on Fuzia, or the female teacher, all the time when she's explaining, she's focusing on Muhammad, okay. Now, please maintain the eye contact, just to avoid confusion, okay. If you share eye contact with only a few students, how will this affect the feeling in a group of students? If you want to correct students' mistakes, then you can focus only on one or two. But if you are explaining to the whole class, no, you maintain the eye contact to the whole class. How will the seating arrangement assess or detract from eye contact? Do your students have eye contact with each other or not? What must you guard against? So these are some questions you have to take into account when dealing with the um, eye contact. Now, using your students' names, we tackled this in the beginning. Other questions are, how can you remember all your students' names quickly? And is this important? And as you, you may remember, I said from the very beginning, you take them to take, uh, to take paper, to write their names, to fold it, and to put it every day in, on the desk in front of them. For one week, you may remember, you may memorize their names. Okay. Now, what can you do if you forget a name? If you forget students' name, what can you do? What should you do? Can you write in the chat box? What do you think? Iman said, you can say, my dear, good. All right. What was your name again? Ashraf said, ask for their name, a, a, a play name, good. Okay, can you remind me of your name? Yes, you can say, yeah, can you please remind me? Yes, my dear, my good student. Okay, can you remind me of your name? Yeah, I really forgot your name. Can you remind me, please? Or as Iman said, my dear, my good um, student, etc. Lovely students, Karima said, great. Okay, yeah. Now, what is wrong with nominating students to answer a question before you ask it? What is wrong with nominating students to ask a question before you ask? For example, say, now I want you, you to ask this question. You. And this is the question. What is the biggest country in the world? So before you ask the question, you nominate the student. What is wrong about it? What do you think? What is wrong? Sumeya, yes, please use the mic. You want to say something? Yes, please. 
Uh, yeah, Professor, I don't understand the, your question, sorry. Uh, the question is, um, basically, if you want to build a good rapport, uh, you have to, to make students feel at ease, feel comfortable. Now, you can ask the question, then you, nom you nominate who is going to answer, or you can nominate the, que the, the person, the students first, then you ask the question. What is wrong about it? Anyone to answer? Very good, Muhammad said, you may put them under pressure. They feel stressed. Yes. So you are going to ask the question, Muhammad. Yeah, the question is, and then you ask the question. It's very embarrassing and it will not um, help in building a good rapport with learners. So you can ask the question, then nominate. Good. Afraid of unknown. Great. Ashraf. Muhuda, it's better to let them answer by their own rather than nominate because students feel stressed. Wonderful. Now, here we are talking about building rapport. If you want to build a good relationship, don't do these, these things. Don't, don't, I mean, um, put them in difficult situations. Okay. So start with the question, then you tell them, I'm going to choose one of you to ask this or to answer this question. Zara, even when they know the answer, they will get stressed and can't answer. And Abraham, wonderful, said, so thinking needs time. Great, so let's move on to the next one. Now, we go back again to sitting arrangement because it's very important. And these are the types of sitting arrangements, separate tables, you can do like this. Uh, a table for five or four students, it's a, it's a kind of group work, but they are separate tables. Or horse show, like this, like a meeting. Okay. Like the parliament. So the bull, uh, as, I mean, this one is like uh, is the teacher, and this one, the stick, is like the, the bull. Okay. And here we have solo work, individual work. You can do like this. One by one, okay. And you can put them into a circle, round tables, or orderly rows, like this. So there are different ways in which you can rearrange or arrange sitting. Horse show, separate tables, circles, solo work, etc. And each arrangement has a purpose. Okay, it depends on the type of the activity, the type of the lesson, the type of the mode of work, etc. So these are some types of sitting arrangement. Now, we move to something very important, discipline problems. And some of you, like Mustafa, talked about in the very beginning of this session about issues taking place in the classroom. Now, my question, why troubles occur in the classroom? Why problems occur? What are the reasons behind that? Yes, any volunteer to talk or you can write in the chat box. So Zahra, yes, please. Just one second. Okay, use the mic. Yeah, sometimes there are students who have hyperactivity, so they will lose concentration over time because they have a very short time to be con uh, concentrated during the class. And also when uh, students do not understand something uh, or nothing at all, he will, he will try to find something else to do, so he will maybe uh, make troubles. And that's it. All right, thank you. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, good. Najia, you want to add something? Use the mic, please. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, hello. Yes. Uh, and sometimes uh, students uh, find the activity is not uh, interesting and they are making noise. Uh, sometimes they are low achiever, also, they, they try to make noise. Wonderful, good. Thank you. Yeah, when they, yes, when, when they feel bored, very interesting. Okay, so let's see here some 
cause uh, yeah, someone else, another person want to talk? Yes, Hanan, yes, please. Uh, there are uh, many reasons behind uh, discipline problem, uh, like family problems. So when the learners have, <coughs> when the learners, <coughs> sorry, yeah. have problems, they might not concentrate in the classroom. Uh, Self-esteem when there is a lack of respect from the teacher or from uh, or from uh, his uh, peers or from his classmates, as well as boredom when the teacher chooses uh, a boring topic or activity, so the students can show their um, uh, disinterest in that topic, as well as desire to be noticed, especially for adolescents, often they seek for attention. Wonderful. Yeah, I liked the. The, the term you mentioned, self-esteem. Thank you. Aisha. Okay, I think that uh, students uh, may be uninterested in the activities the teacher launch or in the subjects they are being uh, taught so that they turn to be noisy and uh, disruptive in the sessions. Thank you, great, thanks. The last one, Mariam. Yes, uh, sometimes the teacher is uh, the source of the problem. For example, when there is no respect or uh, the teacher creates a negative environment in the classroom. Yes, I totally agree. Sometimes the teacher. Uh, Iman from Algeria, then we move on to the next slide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hello. So hello. most, uh, some of our learners suffer from psychological and, psych and social problems. They uh, come in, they, when they come in class, they interpret their anger via their poor behavior. So when we are dealing with them in class, we should not blame them as characters, but rather uh, um, to try to correct the behavior itself to gain their confidence. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes, I really liked all of your, um, I mean, um, suggestions uh, about why troubles or problems occur in the class. Some talks about the teacher as a source of these. Some uh, talks about um, this, is, I mean, uh, self-esteem. Iman talks about uh, um, social problems, okay, etc. Thank you. Now let's see here, Aisha, this respect of teacher and other classmates. All right, Abdurrahim, weak personnel to the teacher. Samir, the activity does not appeal to students. Taste, wonderful, Bashir, a personality changes especially teaching teens uh, karima respect between students and teacher wonderful great let's see here these are some of the reasons teachers presence in the classroom is also a problem we talk about teachers presence teachers attitude teachers beliefs etc okay if the teacher's presence does not respect of course there will be issues family influence family the children are coming from different backgrounds. If the family doesn't believe in education, if the family blames teachers, if the family um, doesn't give value to education, of course, students will, will go to school with negative um, attitudes, with negative points of views in the classroom. So when, whatever you do as a teacher, those students will not give it value, okay? Now, number three, classroom atmosphere. And here we talk about the, the lesson, if it's interesting or not. If you are creating a positive learning environment, if you are creating a fun learning environment. The previous experiences, some students last year, they had very bad experiences with the teachers of English or with teachers in general. So they still have those bad experiences and then they will do the same. They will create problems or they will not like uh, attending your classes, or if they like, they just create problems. And number four is external factors. External factors is outside the classroom. For example, you are tired, you may not interact, or you may create problems. You are angry, you are hangry, okay? These are external factors. You have um, some issues. Okay, and you bring these in classroom and you are stressed, you are angry, and you express these um, issues in the classroom. Okay. Yeah, Karima said some of these problems are out of your hands. I agree. Great, so let's move on here. Now, 
you are going to start your class. It's the beginning of the year. And we are scared or we are stressed or we are not comfortable. And you know what is interesting is that both the teacher and students are not comfortable and they have a lot of questions when it comes to the first contact, the first meeting. So students have got worries, teachers have got wor worries, students have got questions about the teacher, teachers have got questions about students. And that's why you have to plan very well for the first class, the first meeting. And here we can start what students should do and what students should not do. Okay, now, when we talk about teaching English as a foreign language, many teachers call it code of conduct. But I don't like to call it code of conduct. Why? Because basically, when you teach teenagers or even adults, we, we like to challenge, we like to break the law. We like to go beyond the limits. Oh, it's the code. I'm going to challenge the teacher. Oh, it's the code. I'm going to break the, the rules. Oh, it's the code. Okay. So I don't use code of conduct, but I like to use some terms or some expressions that students like to like like them and they would like to follow. Now, my question, I want you to give me other expressions instead of using code of conduct, what are the, the nice terms, the appealing terms that uh, would help students to accept instead of code of conduct? Can you write in the chat box? What do you think? Samir said didactic contract, all right, contract. And here there's a contract, all right, so may a contract. Class rules, there, is, there are rules, students may not like rules. Oh, the rule, I'm going to challenge the teacher. Uh, as well as you said, classroom rules, okay. Agreement, I like it, Mustafa. Agreement, duties and rights. Samira, wonderful, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, what else? What do you think? Your rights and my rights. Sumeya, I like it. So you 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 feel that you like these expressions. You write, and the teacher should ask learners to write by themselves a list of rights and duties. Wonderful, common promises. Siham, Aisha, classroom engagements. Okay, that's nice. Duties and rights for both students and teachers. Samira, wonderful. Bashir, those and don't yeah. Buddha, code of behavior. There is code of behaviors. Great. So let me share with you what I write or what I do with my learners. So basically, I write class room, classroom values. This is what I write. Classroom values. Sorry. I need to fix this one. Classroom, one second. Classroom values. I have to I have to change the language, so I, I'm gonna stop sharing. I change to Okay, then I share again, sorry. Okay. So, as I told you, I quit the classroom values. Classroom one being. We as human beings, we like values, moral values, like what? Like respect, like um, collaboration, helping each other, like um, etc. So we love 
more values, global values, etc. We are teaching teenagers code or rules. They try to challenge or to break them. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is my message behind the code of conduct. You can use some interesting words that students may like. Then you can start. Okay. Now, here, students should and students should not do. So what do you think here? I give the floor to my students. I tell them what you should do in class and what you shouldn't do. So the, I mean, the, the, the center of the learning process or the, the center of my classroom is the student. So I have to listen to what they need and what they, they don't want. What they should, I'm going to remind them, you, cho you, you choose these um, rules by, by yourselves, okay? So we have to stick to them. And they may say, for example, we should come on time. Great, and you're right, coming on time. If students don't come on time, it's their problems because they voted on that and they made that a problem, okay. Now, can you tell me, yeah, Mohammed said class morality is wonderful, so many appreciation. Yeah, can you tell me what do you think students should do in class? Yes. They should do what? For example, they should do homework. They should do homework. Okay, they should do homework. Great. Raise their hands before talking. Raise their hands before talking. Wonderful. Raise your hands before talking. Be on time. Come on time. So be on time. Good. Uh, Najia, respect each other. Great. So respect. You say respect. Respect students and respect the teacher. And the teacher respects students. Concentrate. Paying attention. Great. Yeah, folks, pay attention. Listen to the teacher. We can talk about active listening. Active listening. Great. Very good, Huda. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I mean, Imad, your books. Uh, bring your books. Uh, your books. Uh. Yeah, very good. With uh, participation. Yes, participation. So shouldn't don't, no cheating. Great, no cheating, what else? No interruption, don't interrupt. No interruption. Great. Yes, disturb, no fights, Iman said, okay. No fights, good. No disruption, no noise, great. Yes, no phones, amen, what do you think? He said no phones, it's very confusing, no phones. What do you, what do you mean by no phones? Because sometimes we have unjustified absence. Okay, no. Okay, absence. Very good, Muhammad. Don't make fun of others. Don't make fun of others, especially, especially, sorry, when they are making mistakes. Okay. Using so we can write here, using phones, using phones, using phones for educational purposes. 
educational purposes only. All right. So these are some, okay. These are some um, things that students should do and should not do in the classroom, okay. Sharazat said eating in class, good. Yeah, no food in the classroom, Hanan said, okay. It's not a restaurant. Ah, oh, Balian, wonderful wafa. I like it. Great. And it's a big issue in, uh, in schools. Great. So you discuss with them, this is part of classroom management. And then you show them the importance if you break the rules. Okay. Or the limits. You are going to be in trouble. Okay. Thank you. So it's very interesting to give them a chance to write by themselves what they should do and what they should not do. And then you can also tell them the teacher, you tell them for respect, I'm going to respect you also for time, I'm going to time. For using the phone, I'm going to use the phone only for purpose, for education, for bringing your books, I'm going to bring my materials. For interruption, I'm not going to interrupt you, okay? Noise, it's a, so I'm going to do the same, okay? All right, so yeah, Bashir said, what about this disciplinary actions? Good, now, when students make troubles in the classroom, there are different approaches to do. Number one, as I told you, ignore, ignore, ignore. Number three, you can invite the students. Yes, please, can you come and you go outside the, the classroom? Because you don't have to discuss the problem in public. Try to do it inside the classroom. You talk to him for two minutes next to the door. I respect you, you yeah, and we discuss the, the, from the very beginning of the year. So please, unlike your father, your mother, okay, please, I, I want something good for you. So please try to, uh, to solve the problem, number one, using communication, good communication. So talk in private. Second step, if the students repeat again, then you can use the eye contact. You show him or that you have made something wrong. Okay. And then you talk to him at the end of the classroom, at the end of the classroom. Everyone is gonna go, leave the classroom, and then you stay with him or her. Okay. Uh, uh, but it's better to stay outside the classroom, okay? Don't stay with him or her in the classroom. If you are a female teacher and you are with a male teacher, with a, uh, a boy, it's, it's gonna be a problem. If you are a, a male teacher and you stay in the classroom alone with a female uh, student, it's a problem. It's basically in front of the door or outside the classroom, okay? And then you talk to him again. You tell him, do you have a problem with the family? What issues you have? You can discuss with me, I'm gonna help you. If it works, that's great. If it doesn't work, then you need other partners to solve the problem. Number one, parents. Number two, administration. Or administration and parents. Because now it's beyond your will. Okay. I guess that's time for, that's enough for this one, for the, the first contact with learner. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Now, questions to consider, how is the, these are, uh, as a summary, uh, how is the relationship between the teacher and students likely to vary in each case, and how will, will it affect the classroom atmosphere? Which arrangements are the most conductive, or sorry, conducive to the teacher maintaining effective control? over class. So these are very important questions to consider when you are managing your classes. Number three, what arrangements maximize English speaking production? In which situation will the teacher dominate most? What will the teacher's role be in each case? Which arrangement is most suitable for the student to be able to talk 
to each other. Which arrangements allow, allow students to communicate with, without interference from the teacher? How will the size of the group affect the arrangement? What activities might be suitable for arrangements? Okay, it's a very interesting question you can ask when you are managing classes. Now, as a review, I want you to write in the chat box. Now, what do we mean by classroom management? Give me just one word or two words. Classroom, what is it? What do we mean by classroom management? Organizing, Hussein said, wonderful. Idrisi, uh, organization, Safa, organizing, organization, Ashraf, Aisha, organ, organization, Safa, maintain, wonderful. Iman, managing, great. Board layout, what do we mean by board layout? Or board work, organization, Iman said, okay. Yes, the board, friendly, discipline, Miriam said, the board work. Yeah, purpose, thank you, Siham. Spaces, wonderful, give me just one word. Okay, board organization, great. Objectives, Muhadi said, yes, sir. Great, control, amen. Okay, so remember we said the board, number one, divide, and each space must have a purpose, good. Too many sentences, no need. All right, good. Sitting arrangement, what, what do we mean by, or what does it mean, sitting arrangement? The environment, the physical environment. Checks, yeah, for the board work. Um, I mean, Miriam said spelling, okay. Check spe spelling, Muhadi said. Okay. No, sitting arrangement. Sitting organization, Huda said, create a good environment. Wonderful. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay. The way we organize students' seats. Good. Even types of seating. Circles, I just said. Separate tables. Horse show. Wonderful. Thank you. Grouping students. Give me some examples. Group, grouping students. Collaboration, Sumaya said. Grouping students. Pair. Mariam. Mustafa, pair work, Sharazad, pair, cooperation, Muhadi, Sharazad, individual, sharing, Karima, wonderful, Aisha, exchange knowledge and ideas, whole class, Huda said, collaboration, Imad, solo, Miriam, whole class work, Muhammad, pair work, whole class, individual, Safa, solo work, Muhadi, solo work and pair work, Bashira, cooperative, wonderful, teachers' roles, remember, we said teachers, may differ depending or vary depending on what? On, on what? Can you remind me? Teachers' roles may differ or vary depending on, depending on what exactly? <clears throat> on situation, Siham, wonderful, what else? Learning size, great, Shara Zed. Stages, wonderful, on different learning sites. So yeah, it depends on the situation and the activity. Wonderful, thank you. And also the, the mode of work, etc. Now, voice projection. Yes, voice projection. Loud, see how wonderful, loud, great. Intonation, Mustafa, interesting. Yes, clear, obvious, see how interesting. Said, heard, yes. Make teacher voice audible for students. Thank you, Muhammad. What is everybody can hear? Good body language, stress, magic hand. Thank you, I like it. Abraham speaking up. Now, code of conduct. Give me another word, another expression, another um, for code of uh, code of conduct. Agreement, Muhadis said. Respect, agreement, Aisha. Classroom values, wonderful, respect. Classroom values, great, respect. Okay, yes. So what students should do and what they should not do. Thank you. Yes, yeah, school ethics. Thank you, Bashira. I like this expression. I'm going to use it next time. School ethics or classroom ethics. Wow, I really like it. Thank you, Bashira. 
So classroom values or school ethics? Wow, thank you. I'm going to write it so as not to forget, yeah. Okay, school ethics, thank you. Great, yes. Now, discipline problems, why? Why we have problems in class, in classrooms? What are the reasons? Give me just one cause. Internal, external factors, Muhammad said, wonderful. Teachers, presence, great. Muhadis, not using appropriate plan, wonderful, what that, Shara said, the atmosphere. Family, Miriam said, interesting. Previous experiences, Huda, wonderful, great. So what do we mean by family influence or family's influence? Can you explain? Give me just one example. Family's influence. Okay. Their attitude toward learning. Thank you, Muhadis. Family problems. Great. Divorce. Thank you, Hussein. Social issues, Samira. Yeah, like divorce. Thank you. With the family attitudes. Thanks. Now, what about um, the, the atmosphere? The atmosphere, give me some examples. Class size, good. Large classes. What else? Boredom, yeah. We don't have interesting materials, interesting activities. Students feel bored, then they create problems. Root teachers, good Siham Hussein, mini repeaters, <laughs> mini slow learners. Okay, Huda, morning and afternoon classes. Thank you. Yes, Mustafa, student or students don't understand anything. Yeah, Karima, fear, pressure. As uh, Najia, lack of variety of activities. Great. Idrisi, lack of interest. Huda, stress. Lazy student, Sharadad, Abdurrahim, too many hours. <laughs> Good. Hazard, disrespect for teachers. Bored. Thank you. Okay. I think that's enough for today. Thanks so much for, again, for all the ideas you shared with me. Thanks, Bashira, for the great idea that I got today. It's about school ethics. Wonderful. Okay. So when I meet my trainees the next time, I'm going to share with them this one, okay. Thanks um, all of you for your interesting ideas, comments, questions, and please uh, try to work on that. I'm going to share with you the same video that I showed you last time about um, the, the, the very uh, poor planning about a certain classroom, and I want you to use the, the observation checklist. Do you remember? I shared on WhatsApp group the, the, the observation checklist. I want you to watch the video again, okay? And then you tick, okay, the right answers or you, yeah. And then that observation checklist, you, uh, it, I mean, it will help you to see the strength and weaknesses of the teacher being observed. So please, um, today's uh, task or exercise is watching the video. I'm going to share it again and using the check list. Is it clear so far? Thank you. Now, the, uh, the exercise, you are not going to share it on Google Classroom or in Google Classroom. You are going to share it um, on WhatsApp group. So all of you, you are going to share your observation checklist when watching that teacher um, teaching his or her class. Okay, thank you. So no comments so far? I guess someone wanna talk, please raise your hand again to give you the floor and then we can call it a day. So Muhammad, yes, please use the mic. Sir, for the task who, uh, you assigned for us, which is uh, the designing of the lesson, yeah. you, you, you posted uh, an early review that, that uh, you know, the example you shared, sir, uh, we have already done with it, uh, but you did not 
share the one which you told us uh, previous session to work on. Uh, yes, which which exercise? Can you remind me, please? Yeah, about the teacher, the teachers, uh, one of your uh, trainees, uh, lesson designing. Ah, you mean about lesson plans? Yeah. You yeah, shared I shared, I shared two lessons, two lesson plans. Okay, so, so this, okay. Yeah, uh, but I have, by the way, I have got many lesson plans. If you like, I would share them with all of you. Lesson plans for listening, for reading, for writing, for speaking, for vocabulary, for grammar. If you like, I can share with all of you the lesson plans to have an idea. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, most welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So I'm going to share with them today. So thanks. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.